Hey guys, so I am a verified educator on an academy and along with that I am also available on the Unacademy Plus platform where I am taking live classes along with other educators. So in case you are interested in attending the live classes, you can subscribe to the Unacademy Plus platform using my referral code that is SETHI SETI and that will give you 10% discount. All right. And in case you are not interested in attending the live classes, you can watch the free courses that are available on the Unacademy. For that, all you need to do is go to the Unacademy website or download the Unacademy learning app and search my name over there that is ACT. Once you do that, you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the Unacademy platform. All right. Now let's begin with the video. All right, so a uh, very good evening to all of you. Now there's one common request that I have been getting from most of you that how to write a research proposal. And unfortunately, there are not many resources on the internet which give you a detailed overview of how to write a research proposal, right? Um, so there are some key points that you need to uh, keep in mind. Uh, while writing a research proposal and I'm going to discuss those today. All right. Now, uh, for Indian students, uh, there's a portal called Shodh Ganga, right? S-H-O-D-H Ganga, shodhganga.com, where all the thesis of Indian students, PhD thesis are uploaded and you can go and uh, you can just browse through that website. You'll get an idea of how, you know, the thesis is written and what are the various aspects of a thesis. So a research proposal is also like a thesis, like a thesis, all the work that has been done in the last uh, four or five years of someone's PhD, but research proposal is a shortened version of what exactly you're kind uh, you are going to do. So the topics more or less remain the same in in a actual thesis and in the research proposal, right? So I've listed down all the topics and we'll be discussing that one by one. But if you go through the thesis once, you'll get a good idea uh, of how the research is conducted and you'll get a good idea of whatever points I've written over here that you need to include. You'll get a great idea about it. Okay. So uh, first the title, sorry, yeah, so the first the title, so title as it is, it's very obvious and once you go through those thesis, uh, 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 the PhD thesis, you'll get an idea of how we have to uh, project a title, right? So titles is not supposed to be too long, okay, you, you should not have a title of three, four lines, it should be crisp and short, right? Not that short that you finish the title in five or six words, um, it should have some it should convey some meaning right so let's take a hypothetical example that we want to write a title or we want to do or we want to write a research proposal on uh, or to remove organic contaminants from water we propose a methodology for the same like how can we remove um, organic uh, molecules or organic conta contamination from water right so we want a title related to that right so we have to convey that we are working on uh, you know removing the organic contaminants from the water and using what what is the uh, chemical or what exactly is the procedure that you're going to use to remove that uh, organic pollutants from the water that is what you should include in the title which should be summarized in up to two to three lines okay maximum two to three lines right like for example if i am working on medicinal chemistry so generally um, the most common title that we go with is like design synthesis and biological evaluation of uh, like let's say i'm working on some scaffold let's say i'm working on quinolines so syn design synthesis and biological evaluation of quinoline derivatives as potential um, let's say if I'm working on anti-cancer agents so as potential anti-cancer agents. So that's it. That That's the title. It conveys on what scaffold you're working on. It conveys that um, uh, in which area are you working on, whether anti-cancer or diabetic or whatever it is, on which area you're working on, what exactly are you going to, what you, exactly are you going to do. So it should just convey that in a very um, precise manner, right? It should not be too long. It should not be too short. Then we go on to the abstract. So abstract is a short summary of your research proposal. That what exactly are you proposing in the research? Just a short summary of about 100 to 150 words, not more than that. That will give you an idea of the abstract. Like that will, and for the idea, you can again go through the thesis which are available online, or like I told you, the website shodganga.com where the thesis of Indian students are uploaded, right? So from there, you can get an idea of how to write abstracts, or you can also go and read open access journals, right? So basically, I have this idea of to make a video on the various scientific tools that are available, uh, which will be useful for, for you in your research, right? So I'll be making a video of all the important tools that you require um, in research, right? So that I'll, uh, that I'll be uh, making a separate video on. 
then we have introduction okay so in introduction what exactly are you going to write uh, we, like if you are if you are like proposing a research on removing organic pollutants from water um, then we would write about what is like just a brief idea of what is water contamination how the water gets contaminated right just a brief idea uh, some figures some facts that how much uh, water pollution is there uh, like you can give an example of river ganga that how much water you know the official websites are there which give you the data so you can uh, quote some data you can quote some tables you can make some figures to highlight your point that why uh, that how uh, big a problem is water contamination right so just a brief idea and over here i have written brief literature review that in literature what all has been uh, you know reported about water contamination literature review basically means all the research articles that are there related to water contamination right so just to give a brief idea about the subject about the topic of water contamination about organic pollutants where they are being used right and how do they enter the water so this is the brief introduction that you give about the topic of your research right then we go on to the current scientific studies now your pro your idea is to remove organic pollutants from water right so what are the current methods that are being used um, for removing water contaminants okay that you have to again write, write using literature in literature there might be many methods which have been report, reported to remove the water molecule right uh, sorry to remove the organic pollutants from the water so what are those methods then the most important point is what are the drawbacks of those methods or what is the gap in knowledge so it depends if you are writing let's say a theoretical research uh, proposal like about theoretical chemistry or any theoretical subject then you have to write about what is the gap what are the current scientific studies and what exactly they are not addressing so this is the gap in knowledge and this is very key that what exactly are the loopholes or what exactly is uh, the thing that is not understood which have not been reported in scientific studies and how your proposal is going to bridge the gap of knowledge that is there or how your proposal is going to fix those loopholes that are currently there in the uh, in the field of research that you are targeting this is very important this gap in knowledge and how your proposal is going to bridge the gap so this you have to highlight and this you have to support with the help of literature review okay so i'll give you an example like beta cyclodextrin is a molecule which is uh, basically it's it's a uh, oligosaccharide okay which is uh, which is like it's like a you can say it's like a tumbler okay it's like a tumbler which is hydro uh, like which is hydrophilic on the outside and hydrophobic on the inside right so generally uh, what happens is like for example if i talk about organic pollutants in water the organic pollutants basically uh, go inside this hydrophobic cavity of beta cyclodextrin right and since beta beta cyclodextrin is water soluble so all the organic impurities go inside this cavity and they are trapped right and then later on we can remove this beta cyclodextrin from water okay and you know you can attach to this beta cyclodextrin let's say some uh, magnetic some some uh, iron let's say nanoparticles you attach to this beta cyclodextrin somehow you attach a iron um, iron nanoparticles right and uh, so this organic pollutants they trap the uh, they are get they get trapped in the cavity of the beta cyclodextrin and when you apply some magnetic resource all the beta cyclodextrin along with the organic pollutants uh, come to one side and the and the water and the water gets free of the contaminants the organic contaminants right so this is a research methodology that you can propose so this is a method you can propose right so that comes under objectives that what do you plan to propose and in this bridge the gap like i was giving you this example of beta cyclodextrin right so let's say now nobody has tried this method okay this has already been tried but i'm just giving an example let's say that you want to try that out and has not been tried so you can give the example of beta cyclodextrin you can quote from literature that what are the properties of beta cyclodextrin then you can uh, quote from literature what are the properties of iron uh, uh, you know iron nanoparticles and then you can go to the objectives that what do you propose to do with the beta cyclodextrin and with the iron so in the objectives you can mention that you wish to combine the uh, beta cyclodextrin and the iron and then you know later on uh, you know uh, apply some magnetic source and uh, extract the beta cyclodextrin uh, and the iron uh, particle uh, along with the organic pollutants right so this is how you can uh, strengthen your research proposal right so your research proposal should be backed by literature that if you are proposing to do something it should not be something which is hypothetical you have to propose it like obviously it has not been done so you cannot 
you have to use some kind of imagination but a lot of the theory that you are proposing should be backed by literature review okay and then we come on to the objectives that like that i told you then comes the methodology the timeline also if possible if you can write the timeline that will be great but that is not necessary because obviously you don't know what exactly are you going to do or how exactly it's going to unfold uh, because that's why it's research but uh, methodology basically means that what all do you propose to do so like if uh, i take an example of beta cyclohexane iron so first of all you plan to propose you plan to link them together right then you would want to test its magnetic properties um, then you would want to check how how much organic pollutant is it trapping so you would be using it using it in different concentrations in water right so this is how you have to you have to propose the methodology and if you are going for a total chemistry from a chemistry point of view let's say you're planning to do a total synthesis so in methodology you will propose that what particular molecule are you planning to do the total synthesis of so basically that will come in the um, current scientific studies what are the current protocols to design that molecule or to uh, to like synthesize that molecule what are what are what are the drawbacks of the synthetic procedures that are reported for synthesizing that molecule and then in methodology how will you uh, what will you state basically you state the reto synthetic route for that particular molecule and then the forward reaction that what all uh, what all um, fragments are you going to combine together to get the final molecule so that is what you're going to propose in the methodology right and then finally we come on to the references and bibliography so basically that means whatever literature review you had proposed in the introduction and uh, in the literature review section that how your particular research proposal is going to bridge the gap that all these references that you have taken from uh, various uh, scientific articles mostly i would uh, recommend you to, that most of the citations or most of the references should be from um, scientific articles it could be from some authentic reference books also and it could also be from uh, official government sites right like uh, fda is there us fda or any you know official site like uh, for protein uh, proteins for crystallographic structure of proteins there's protein data bank so these are all official websites so for proposing some data or some facts you can also use uh, references of various official websites also on uh, in the references section but please don't use wikipedia or some random article that has been that is available on the internet or you, you cannot uh, you know cite a video you cannot do that you ha it has to be very authentic the information that whatever you are citing has to come from very authentic resources like a very good world renowned book mostly like i suggested scientific articles or it could also be from various official government websites so this is the basic idea of how you can go about um, writing a research proposal so i hope this video video gave you a certain idea of how to write a research proposal in case you have some more doubts regarding it you can let me know down in the comment section and i'll try and film another video regarding that right so anyway i hope you found this video useful if you did please give it a big thumbs up and also do not forget to subscribe to my channel that would mean a lot to me thank you so much